Have you ever been on your phone while eating dinner with your family when one of your parents looks at you and asks, why can't you put that phone down and just talk to us? At the time, you probably thought something like, why can't they just leave me alone? Or who cares? This is what I used to think too. And I know many of you felt the same, but what if I told you that your parents may have actually been onto something? I believe this small and seemingly insignificant event would end up foreshadowing a big problem of the future. A future where nobody lives in the moment choosing to instead live inside their heads, in their own worlds, that's governed by their own rules. Doing this makes everything feel dull. Smells, tastes, the feeling of the air on your skin. You seemingly lose the ability to perceive all these senses, making life as a whole just feel dull. Which leads me to the question, how do you actually live in the moment? Everyone wants to know this, but realistically, only 20% of people will be willing to watch the video all the way through, therefore gaining the knowledge of how to actually live in the moment, in just two steps, and learn to live the life that's been in front of you this entire time. Before we get into the steps of how to actually live in the moment, I think it's really crucial that we first understand why living in the moment is so important, and realize that it has real and serious benefits for us. First off, it can help reduce anxiety, as anxiety is literally worrying about the future, or the future consequences of past actions. By being in the present, we're naturally avoiding anxiety, as it's almost like we're in a completely different realm. Not only can living in the moment reduce anxiety, but it also lets us sit with our feelings of anxiety, and ask questions as to why we feel this way. By sitting with our feelings free of judgment, we can find the root cause of these anxieties and fix them. Being present in the moment also helps us build better relationships. It makes it so we're actively and respectfully listening to our peers, which in turn is going to make you guys have a better relationship as you better understand each other, meaning you're going to build a stronger bond. Living in the moment also means better focus, as it strengthens our ability to filter out distractions, which then makes us more productive. Being present also makes you smarter emotionally, as you become more aware of your own feelings and how you're reacting to those feelings, allowing you to properly navigate through them. Now, personally, these benefits, for me at least, are more than enough reason to want to live in the moment. And the thing is, there's still a lot more benefits, like building stronger memories, reducing stress, having better self-appreciation, and so on. Hopefully, if you were on the fence about this whole living in the moment thing, I convinced you that it's absolutely worth it. And honestly, it's actually really easy to implement into your life, and it all starts with step one. Leave the mind. The first and absolutely most common crippling thing that takes you right out of the moment is your phone. Now, why getting off your phone is so important was covered heavily in my last video, How to Actually Stop Wasting Time. So if you're interested in finding out more about this, please check out that video first and then return back to this video. Otherwise, I don't think I really need to explain this one that much, as everyone has taken out their phone at a time where they really didn't need to, like at the dinner table with family, when you're hanging out with your friends, and so on and so forth. Realistically, all of the bad things that you want to get out of your life are all probably forms of instant gratification. Whether that's drugs, video games, TV, etc. These are literally made to take you out of the present, usually numbing your feelings. So limiting or completely removing some of these is absolutely crucial if you want to live in the moment. Once we have left the mind, we can do step number two, which is enter the present moment. We've talked about the benefits of living in the moment, but now comes the question of how do you actually enter the present moment? And the quick answer to that is meditation. Now, meditation is really only one term for it as it goes by a lot of different names nowadays. You may have heard the term mindfulness or breathing exercises. And truthfully, it's not the only method of entering the present. It just so happens to be the one that I have the most experience with and enjoy the most. I've also heard of the 54321 method, which is naming five things you can see, four things you can touch or feel, three distinct sounds you hear, two things you can smell, and one thing you can taste. Obviously, the goal of this is to bring yourself into the present moment, becoming aware of all your different senses. I encourage you to try all the different methods to see what works for you. But for now, I want to circle back into meditation. I think a lot of people have the wrong idea of meditation. They imagine the classic monks sitting with their legs crossed and their fingers in the okay position, saying, Om, Om. What this really is, is only one of many different meditation techniques, all offering their own focuses and based off different belief systems. Now, meditation is definitely not just some spiritual, tree-hugging, hippy-dippy activity. A lot of meditation is actually heavily grounded in science. Now, I am in no way going to try and sit here and act like I have some type of PhD in science, because I absolutely do not. But I do trust a guy called Alak Kanojia, or as you probably know him, the Healthy Gamer. Now, I won't get into much detail about him besides highly recommending his content. 
which is more centered around the actual science of things like meditation, depression, anxiety, etc. He's an actual psychiatrist who graduated from Harvard University. He also at one point was training to become a monk, which is why he has such extensive knowledge on things like meditation. And he teaches the meditation while also showing you the science, which I find really fascinating, as the body is capable of doing some pretty incredible things if you know how to do it. One example of this is a breathing exercise where you breathe in through one nostril and then you breathe out the other nostril and you basically do this in a circular motion. This breathing technique is proven to lower blood pressure, slow heart rate, make you feel calmer, and also helps bring you into the present moment. Moral of the story, meditation is pretty awesome, and I highly recommend that you do some research on the different methods of meditation, and give them a try. Hopefully at some point I'll be able to make a video about the different methods of meditation, but this is going to be something I would do in the future as my knowledge on meditation still has a long way to go. Some other examples of habits we may want to integrate into our lives are things like yoga, journaling, spending more time in nature, and doing creative activities. Now I'll be honest, I actually haven't tried yoga yet, but hopefully it's something I'll try soon. I also don't personally do journaling, but I do something similar which is when I'm having troubles with things like anxiety, whether it's me struggling with not knowing what I want to do with my life, or whatever else it may be. I like to write down on a piece of paper how I feel, and sometimes this is in the form of a mind map, and work my way through these tough to navigate emotions. Doing this makes it a lot easier to find a fix, as I can see the root cause of the problem. And from the root cause, I can see all the problems that it's causing. I also make an effort to go out in nature as much as I can, usually bugging my girlfriend to do something spontaneous. Lastly, and probably the one I struggle with the most, is doing creative activities. Now, technically, my video slash blog, also have a blog link in the description, are definitely creative, whether it's writing, video editing, marketing, but outside of work-related things, I tend to struggle to be creative. I've never been into playing instruments, drawing, painting, arts and crafts, etc. I always preferred sports. But I do think it would be fun to try and learn an instrument at some point in my life. I've just never really been given the opportunity, and I honestly can't really afford one anymore. Also in the description, I have a Ko-fi page where you can go to support me. It's kind of like Patreon where I have tiers and memberships and things like that, or you could just leave a donation. But I definitely do like music, so I do think this would be very enjoyable. These activities are the best as they literally require you to be in the moment, being creative, and having fun. Well, kinda requires you to, as this brings me to a bit of an inner debate I have with myself. You see, my girlfriend sometimes draws, and when she draws, she listens to YouTube videos. In fact, she tends to listen to YouTube videos when she pretty much does anything. But I myself question if, when you lean into these YouTube videos, if you're taking away from the actual experience of what you're doing, and therefore losing some of the benefits. This is something where I definitely want to know what your guys' opinions are, and please do leave them down below in the comment section, as I genuinely don't know. Well, I truly do hope that I managed to influence some of you into giving the present moment a try. I know it can be tough living in the moment, as life can often be really hard, but I think it's worth it, so that when we have our good moments, we get to experience them fully 100%. If you enjoyed this video, I think you will love my last video on how to actually stop wasting time or the next video I'm working on, which is how to actually develop good habits. 